All right, I'm gonna start with one. Just cause You're starting with Belinda. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Belinda. This is a follow-up from our last session. Thank you, Bethany and Sparky. We went back to basics with Bailey and he settled very quickly. Even the daytime separation anxiety seems to be better. He was spoiled with, uh, spoiled with attention at my parents' house and I guess he's had to remember it's okay to be alone. It happens. Yeah. Bailey is about to hit six months old. As he is a toy cavapoo, I assume I can expect adolescence soon, if not already. Mm -hmm. Any tips for managing this challenging time would be greatly appreciated. Huge thanks once again. You guys are amazing. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. And honestly, it sounds like you've already hit a little bit of adolescence with all that whining and barking, that separation anxiety when you brought him back from your parents' house. I would say going back to basics is what I'd tell for a lot of our clients who are hitting adolescence. All those, so think about all the privileges we've given to our puppies as they get older and they're doing really, really well. So we maybe give a little bit more free time out of the crate. We give less time on doing certain things like, or I guess not less time, but we might even do more training. If you find that you're getting a lot of stubbornness, you're hitting adolescence, go back to the basics and practice your routines and use more food work. Use a little bit stronger body blocks. You're just, uh, you're treating your puppy less like a puppy and more like an adult dog. Honestly, when you get more and more into adolescence, just like when you get a certain way with teenagers, you gotta be firmer. And, and if anything, you might have this like, for kids, maybe there's this like sweet spot between nine years old and between nine years old and 12 years old, 11 maybe, you get this tiny little sweet spot and then they're an adolescent kid and you're like, what happened to my child? You just wake up one day. Yeah, you just wake up one day. And that's how it is for dogs too. And we come across this so often where the puppies are doing good. And by puppies, I mean under five months old, under six months old. The owners get more lax because the training's going so well, and then all of a sudden, it gets really bad. Potty issues, disrespect issues, demand whining, I heard that, and barking, things like that. And what happens is you wonder what, hap what happened to your baby. They're not a baby anymore, they're an adolescent like that. So we highly encourage, nobody listens to us, but we highly, <laughs> we highly encourage everybody to stay with that strict uh, structure schedule the first two years that a dog is alive. So. Oh, I think that you just crushed some dreams, eh? I know, I crushed all your dreams. What I told even a, just a client this morning is he's at the six month period of his dog being, that's his age, They've been in the program for about a month and a half. They did their second lesson out of our four. And he asked me, how long do I do the structure schedule for the crating? I said, every, at a year and a half, do a check-in period. And if you start eliminating the amount of time you do crating, you maybe increase the amount of time you do place. If two weeks later you get a little bit more biting, that's a correlation. That's something you have to look at mm -hmm. and say, oh, what have, I, what have I stopped? What have I minimized? The crate, let's go back to our other crate schedule, our original one, biting is de-escalated. All right, that was it. I usually say evaluate every six months when they hit a year and a half, a year, a year and a half of age, and then you'll kind of find what you can pull back on and what you need to increase on. Also, guys, crate is not just for potty training. No. Dogs Structure. right now. I want I want you guys to look at this little cotton doutelier, um, Walter. Look, do you think he's looking at us or at you up here? This contraption? No, he's looking at all the dogs. Now don't get me wrong, this is a busy environment, but even if he was just home, out, he's whining now, I'm, hey, you, be quiet. Um, even if he was at home and, uh, and was fairly good at home, but there's a lot of people in and out, there's a lot of noise by the neighbors, these puppies become overstimulated. And so by putting a puppy or an adolescent dog in crate in a quiet room with maybe a radio playing or fan or white noise machine, something to truly let them rest, excuse you, to truly let them rest and shut their brains down. I'm gonna say something crazy, it just came to me. Uh -oh. Because I worked in rescue for years, like at rescue facilities. And I, and I bet you could attest to this, even though I don't think you did that, but. I work through rescues, you, but you. I work with a lot of rescues after snobby, adopted. Snobby, snobby, snobby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Sort of. There's two dogs sort of, rescues sort of. in the shelter. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Any opportunity I can take to like, just bring you down, you down a little bit. It's okay, I'll take it. Okay, so anyway, a lot of times we go into homes and we see these puppies, adolescent dogs, out of control with overstimulation, very similar to what we see with dogs in shelters. Because dogs in shelters have no structure, they're in a kennel, they see coming and going, they see dogs coming and going, they're never taught how to deal with those emotions, and they're just like this. 
I know like zoomies twenty four seven. Yeah, most jump, clients and, have gotten zoomies and jump up and wine and bark. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys see all the pitiful videos of Insta on Instagram of dogs that are sad in the back of the kennel. But go visit your local shelter. That's not most of them. Most of them are out of control over being just uh, overstimulated. Is that a word? Stim Overst stimulated. Overstimulated. Yeah, there we oh, go. Yeah. But anyway, you get my point. These dogs need a break. They need to be able to turn their brain off. And the way we live with them now, they don't have a quiet backyard to take long naps during the day. That, that's just not the world we live in now. They're in apartments, they're in cities, they're in busy super, suburban neighborhoods. And so you need to give them those controlled nap times. I want to play devil's advocate. Or you create a crazy dog. There's no devil's advocate. I'm playing it. I'm doing it. We have five questions, no, four questions. We have questions coming in. I am still bringing in more. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm playing it. So we it's have a very lame. cute. We have a very cute Walter here. Walter. He's got beautiful white fur, and I'm Walter. sure most people, when holding this dog, would be petting him and loving him the whole time. Uh, see, it was a good. It was a good devil's I don't know. Go ahead. Why aren't you loving him? Why aren't you petting him? Why aren't you comforting him, Bethany? Well, Go first ahead. of all, he, for him specifically, one, he's whining and hyper focused on everything else. Two, I have been a little bit, and it's been massage mm -hmm. to try to help him relax. Not what a good puppy. Um, and three, because he seems quite confident on his own and he does not need me to sit here and further his ego. <laughs> and if she had, he would still be whining. Look, he actually kind of settled down a yeah. little bit. When she ignored the whining, she ignored that frustration of not being able to play with other dogs, he actually did settle. Uh, I actually didn't ignore it. If you'll recall, if we play the video tape, I, which we expect everyone to do now. Yes, yes. I said at or no or I don't know or knock it off. I said something, but I took my hand very firmly on his chest or his back or something. And I was just like, hey, that that's right. That that's right. So we're not shaking the baby. Calm it's a little him down. Nudge. It was just it was just a little yeah. just just to get his attention. Mm -hmm. He looked at me. And then it's like, settle down, good dog. Now I'll go back to massage. It's not like the kids running in circles screaming, you're like, hey, 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 settle down. Settle down. And they're like, oh yeah, why were we doing that? I don't know if it's that easy with kids. You don't have kids. I don't have kids. You don't have kids. <laughs> you don't have kids. I have dogs. <laughs> Moment of clarity is a little bit easier to get with dogs. But but anyway, guys, and I'm not flat hand petting. I'm not like, good boy. It's like calm, controlled, good boy, nice. Where are you going? He's trying to come to me so he loves me more. You work with him more than I, I know, do. Josh works though. So. Anyway, okay, guys, you get our point. Let's move on. That was a good one. Good devil's advocate, right? I don't even remember the devil's advocate. I don't oh. remember either. All right, from Naomi Marie, welcome back. Hello again, new question. What should a seven month old puppy crate set, oh, puppy crate setup look like? Seven hours, if gone seven hours. Oh, oh okay. Seven months old though, seven I don't know. Old. Maybe your puppy can hold it and lay down. If you take them for a hike in the morning or like an hour, hour and a half long walk, and should I be leaving the water bowl? I'm afraid she'll just tip it over. Uh, I wouldn't leave a water bowl, but if you're gonna do a long period of time and your puppy's able to hold the urine, then you, no, I still wouldn't do that. Never mind. take that back. Bethany, what are you gonna say? I usually leave a little bit of water for dogs um, if I'm gone more than four or five hours, but it also depends. Squeeze bottle though. You could train a squeeze bottle. I know. I like the squeeze bottle. I know you, you do. look at it. Got a little rolly ball in there. Um, you just get something that attaches to the crate and then clip it, mm -hmm. you know, to the top. So he might spill it, but he can't knock it all over the place. Like a guinea pig. Um, but have him guinea drink dog. have him drink water before he goes. Uh, before he before you leave, sorry. Have him drink water before you leave, but he also needs a potty break before you leave. This is only if you think your dog is gonna be fine. Woo! Wow. Demanding your attention. <laughs> wow. Walter, you've about overstayed your welcome, cutie pie. Um, but anyway, it, it really just depends on the dog. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know a ton of seven month old dogs that could do that, but I do know some. My German Shepherd was one of them. She loved her crate. There was a few long days we had where she had some six hour days and she was fine. She could do longer. I'd say give it a try. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but give it a try. Try the seven hours. Yeah. And only a little bit, only a little bit of water, but it also depends on the climate. I just wanted to mention the yeah. climate you live in. If we're in Arizona, out here SoCal, how hot it gets, even with AC, we always do um, a little bit of water. If you're in Nebraska, yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but um, if you get a potty accident, we're sorry, it happens. Yeah. And you know that, no, they can't hold it for seven hours. If they cannot hold it for seven hours, then I recommend doing a, I don't know what kind of breed it is. It didn't say the breed, but seven months old, I'm assuming a bigger dog then I'll do a large, tall playpen setup 
around the crate. You're talking like a seven month old. If it's a large breed dog, you're like getting great Dane size crates. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's maybe hard. maybe it's hard. maybe put them in the in the basement with a really strong baby gate and uh, you know and a potty patch in the corner. But, but they can't be chewing. But they can't be chewing. Yeah, that's right. See, that won't work either. I don't if like you're, that. If you're getting a dog forget, that's forget, chewing, we're problem solving. Crate for seven hours, forget but someone I comes said. in at the four hour mark to give them a quick potty break. Yeah, I don't know where you Rover live. Rover does it for like 15, 20 bucks per yeah. time. Yeah, I don't know where you live. City life. But neighbor, Rover, something simple. Um, if your dog has some behavioral issues, you'll, af you'll have to pay for someone that's more like a 30 to $40 to come in and properly mm -hmm. know how to handle your dog. But if you can go cheap just to give that potty break and then back and Great. And this I mean, is all going off of if you can't get seven hour hold time. Yeah. My dog used to just hold it for like eight hours. I'd come home. At a young age? For, yeah. At a young age? Uh, nine months old. So a little bit older, but I mean, now it's good. It's the point to where when I go home for my lunch today, I'll bring her out of her crate. She'll go potty and then I'll be like, all right, come lay next to my feet. And she'll go back into her crate until I leave. I'm like, Damn, dog doesn't even love me. <laughs> so some dogs love their crate and Good they'll job. do long periods of time and they're no issue. Just got played by ear. <laughs> look, look at this dog. He's like, don't, don't touch me. Don't uh, love I, me. I, he wants to go play with the dogs. So he's like, don't, don't touch me. Are, are we, are we done with our puppy right yeah, now? Yeah, we can put him. He's so cute. Say bye, Walter. Don't let him take your mic with look him. Look how adorable this face is. Oh my gosh. Bye, buddy. He's a good little dog. <laughs> feisty, feisty little thing. You want to do the next one? Yes, give me. Oh. Okay. Wait, do that one, do that one, because I know you're going to love that. Okay. Uh, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. I hope you'll address not just counter surfing, but insistent counter surfing. Well, Stuart, you seem passionate about this. Um, our, you should like this one. Our five month old Border Collie, half lab, gets worse as she grows as she can see she can see more on the counters also does chewing up a couch count as counter surfing no it does not couch surfing couch surfing no couch surfing <laughs> <laughs> couch no, surfing no, just doesn't. means that they surf the top of the couch yeah like oh, there is destructive couch surfing is, which is like jumping over furniture tearing up the cushions not with their teeth but like with their balls. yeah he's just chewing which is normal for his age mm -hmm. you need five month old age, five months? Five, if you have a five month old anything and you give them furniture or even a bed in crate they're probably going to chew it up so that's Super normal, sorry. You need more management, you need better uh, supervision in the house. You probably need to be teaching impulse control in about a million other ways. Here's the thing about dog training, guys. If I have a reactive dog, if I have a dog that's barking at other dogs, yes, we do give you techniques to work on those moments, but my teaching is done in other moments. No, you will not be too excited looking out the front door. No, you will not jump on me. No, you will not do X, Y, Z. Um, I set a tone with dogs and even puppies in a different, in, like in a different way, in more of a training, controlled training session way. And then half of this other stuff disappears, but not the counter surfing. The you chewing. don't have training moments. You have a training life. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's like raising kids. You have a, you have a, you're raising a dog forever. Good luck. No, okay. So anyway, <laughs> five month old border collie. Oh, counter surfing. So we did do a video on this. Maybe that's. I that's think he's where going off of that, from. but he's yeah. getting cons insistent counter surfing. Insistent so. counter surfing. I still say though, it's going to be the same thing for regular counter surfing. We put a leash on a dog and we control what they have access to. With insistent counter surfing, I'm going to assume they're just more pushy. I might do or it looking, looking for their moments. Like puppy, oh, even puppies okay. will be like, they're they're not looking at me right now. I had a, uh, a long time ago, it was a dog that was about 155 pounds, and we would work with this dog every session I'd be with them on the counter surfing, and we literally had to set up cameras, we had to put a long leash on the dog, go around the corner, and the whole thing was because on one beautiful Thanksgiving day, they had their whole 15 person family over, and they had a huge 35 pound turkey, and at one point, the uncle says, hey, what happened to the turkey? And they go, what do you mean? It's on the counter. You and told this story last year. Did it's I? Good. I did. Yeah, it's good. They found it outside. <laughs> Half a leg was left. This dog <laughs> ate the entire turkey, boiling hot turkey, and he enjoyed every second of it. But from that moment on, they really understood their dog, and they said, okay, if there's food on the counter, these are training moments. If there's a bagel on the counter, this is a training moment. Long leash went on, they went halfway across the room and had a hand on that long leash. Yeah. 
hand on a training collar, harness, whatever you have on your dog. And the second that dog looked at the counter, it wasn't jumping. That's correcting the mistake they're making. Yep. You're trying to get a precursor. Intent. Look. You're going Thank after you. Thank you. intent. That was the one I was going for. Like, the second he looks, they give a, hey, little tug on the leash, come, play, sit down. They started correcting intent. Six months later, that dog, when it looked at the counter without them saying word, it was like, eh, oh, went laid on its place. Yeah. And then I didn't go over their house anymore. They were done. <laughs> you need to teach place command. You need to teach weighted thresholds. You need to be very firm about other boundaries in the house if you're getting this type of pushy behavior. Yep. You need to matter to your dog in a way that makes your dog think, oh, I want to go out the front door. Oh, but wait, my owner doesn't want me to do that. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting that type of just connection uh, with your dog, that counter surfing is not going to go away no matter what. We, we do like to use with old, usually I say six months and older, but we do like to use uh, pet correctors, which are like, and they just, they're, they have a startling effect. Um, you have a split moment to then redirect your dog though. Yeah. Short attention span is like 1.34 seconds for a young dog. Older dogs too is only like two seconds. Dog come, place. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, dog come. And then place, release them, there. and then release them, sorry. And then release them and see if they do it again. Why? This is actually a really great question. We've gotten because a you need, lot of questions on this too. You need to see if it's gonna work. Yes, you don't wanna just stifle the drive to wanna jump on the counter. You gotta make sure that they're learning that it's not just the pet corrector that tells them no, it's the habit that you're trying to break, not the moment, the habit, long term. Oh, and I have two more things to say, and I can because we have time today. So, um, Ooh, man, don't, don't ruin my jam. You get one of the two. So, um, no, I have to have both. It's context. If you, not you, not you, Stuart, but just the general population of you. TikTok you. <laughs> TikTok you. If you do not also do other things, the, the firm waiting at doors, not just sit for a treat and, and then the I open opens the and door. Blast through. No, I mean like I can just open the door and my dog learns not to go through it. Not jumping up on me for larger breed dogs. I say that because I'm lenient with the small breeds. Um, things like that. If you if you aren't diligent with if you aren't diligent with that other stuff, there is nothing in the world that is going to stop your puppy from getting something on the counter because the reward up there is bigger than anything you can do with the dog. And so you have to have other places of keeping your puppy in check, just like you do children, just like you do yourself, you know, driving down the road. I'm not texting. Why? Because I don't want to die and I don't want to kill somebody else. Or, say ticket. I don't want to or ticket. a cop behind me. Yeah. So it's like, you're the cop. Okay. <laughs> um, think of it that way. And then the other thing I would do is make sure you are working. You, wait, man, I'm all about the you today. Make sure you are working your puppy in the house. So I might set up a pet corrector situation and then test it out again. And then in 30 minutes to an hour, I'm going to have my puppy drag a leash or on a loose leash and very calmly do some training in the house by the countertop, walk by the countertop, keep their focus. Let's go work, turn, stop and sit, place for 15 minutes most days of the week. Because I also need to teach my dog how to live in my house when they are moving around. So you gotta have- Structure. You gotta have all this stuff come full circle. All this stuff come full circle. Okay guys, um, yeah. moving on. One more here. Really Two fast. More here. This is super fast. Alexia, this puppy schedule was a major help in getting our Frenchie potty trained. Good deal. We started using it four or five months old. He's almost 11 months old and pretty much potty trained. Ooh, that's tough. You've really stuck in it. Way to go. That's, that's a tough, long period of time. We are now going to use um, the basic idea to create a new schedule for him and our senior dog so we can start living with them both. More free time in the house. Such a huge help. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome, Alexia. That's, that's like a dog trainer yeah. right there. That's That's... You've done your research. Pro and problem solving. Way mm -hmm. to do some problem solving. Yeah, Great job. Nice. Okay, cool. So let's hop on to we some quick. Oh, no, we do? Oh, yeah. uh, Stella. My nine. Don't worry, Stella. We didn't forget about you. My nine, but thank you. My nine month old toy poodle. So this is a nine month old dog, everybody. This is an adolescent dog. Let's just be clear. Um, gets aggressive and bites when he has his chewy bone. How can I make him stop? So one of the easiest ways, and I know it's probably not the answer you're looking for, is be preventive. I don't give chewy bones to dogs that misbehave with chewy bones. One of the easiest things to do, uh, Bethany might give you a little bit more information. That's kind of more down her alley, but a lot of what we do is preventive. I have a dog that, one of my dogs, if I give her a, um, a yak milk bone, a little milk bone thing, 
she will actually growl at me. It's the only time ever in my entire time of owning her has she growled at me. My other dog, no issue. So I don't give them to either of the dogs because I have one dog that does have an issue with it. Preventive is the easiest way because this is more of a puppy channel. I'm, I'm gonna stick with that being my final answer. So while I agree with you, in some ways. Some people want to work on these issues. They don't want to just manage around them. Sometimes aggression is so bad that you don't have a choice. And a nine month old, they'll really nail you. This isn't like some 14 week old playing around with growling and biting puppy. This is a nine month old dog. So it's, it's, a, it's a dog. It's almost full size or it is full size. Toy poodle, probably full size. There's a, there's a few things here. There's a respect issue, and but then there's also genetics. So some dogs will just do this, even if they've had a great structured upbringing by some of the most firm uh, trainers or sport dog trainers or breeders in the, in the world, they'll still have food aggression, sometimes from their dogs. I've seen it. And these dogs have a great out command where they'll growl while eating a bone, but they'll out when the owner asks them to. But, but so it's, sometimes it's very primal, it's very genetic. I bet there's some disrespect in there somewhere you could work on. This is what I would encourage you to do. I'm not trying to push your comment off, Stella. I promise I'm not. But last week, we had a question about this, and it was over food or food bowl, and it was the very first one, and it was very long. We talked about a lot of things. So on our Instagram IGTV, find the one from last week, watch the beginning, because, and this is why, this is why I promise I'm not pushing you off. Because if you can't practice all of these things with just regular dry food, kibble, bowl, if you can't get that type of connection with your dog that way, you'll never have a chance at teaching it with the bone. So have a better relationship with just regular, boring, easy food with your dog. And then I would uh, say that you should seek out someone to help you teach out which means move away from an object or person of value. Or sometimes we use it for nervous dogs. Like if a person comes up, makes a dog nervous, out, teaches them to move away from nervousness. This is a very advanced command, so I, we can't go into it. But that's, that's what I would want for you, is to spend a few months working on um, the food work that we mentioned in our last IGTV at the, at the very beginning, easy to find, and then seek out some help with the uh, out command. So anyway, I hope that helps, Stella, and uh, please come back to us, tell us how things are going, how they're not going, what's working, what's not working, and we'll continue to help you if you want to revisit. Okay. Questions. Moving on. Mary Ellis says, how would you start training a six month old to go potty outside? Structure schedule. Every video we make. This is not a puppy anymore. This is an adolescent dog. So your kind of window of being a sponge and kind of soaking things in, it's a little past due. So the habit might be... Uh, Expect more whining and crying in the crate. Yeah. And then more frequent trips of going out three minutes coming back in and creating when they don't potty right away. More frequent, repeating. more frequent trips, not because they can't hold it, because at this age they can, they but, beca but because they have the habit of going inside. Mm -hmm. But it's the same schedule, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And it sounds like you're probably using a potty pad, so probably. eliminate potty pads. Yeah, you've got to eliminate it. Gone, yeah. none. All right, my doodle, still having issues with my eight month old golden doodle, getting her in the car. She really hates the car. So this doodle looks big. If it's the one in the photo that I'm looking at, um, it's a pretty big doodle. So you want control of the head in some way, shape or form. So some type of leash to have control of the head and stop going for trips. Just open both back doors. That's one of the things I like to do so the puppy, the dog can see, how old is this dog? Eight month old, so it's older. So it can see out the car and you get in first and call the dog in. It's a lot of physical work. Do that first, then teach him to follow leash guidance in, build up to having all of their meals in the car, all, all while they're not even going anywhere yet. Then build up to actually going for short drives, not just the long drive when you have to take them somewhere. I was like ramps too. I'll put the ramp on the edge of the sill of the bottom part of the car, get them to go up the ramp, and then walk the wheel well and then go up on the cushion of the back seat. You're way nicer. This is the big dog. You're way nicer than me. I, I've had to do with elderly clients that can't pull the dog and they can't in, they can't increase the pressure. I, I've done that too. They can't climb all over the back seat. So, I mean, I don't know. I got 
quite a few elderly clients that I okay. do do this with. Okay, no, I did that once. They were never able to wean off the ramp though. That's why I don't love my, it. These guys were neither. Almost none of my clients that do the ramp were able to wean off of it. Some dogs are just not confident enough without it, but they're happy with it. So try her way first. Yeah. Hers is honestly easier for the long term. Yeah. Mine is easier for the short term, but it's a life. A lifestyle uh, change. Thank you. Yeah, but it still works. Style. One, one tiny little thing I'll add to that is do other hard things. Get you the same type of leash on your dog and go have them target, you know, a picnic table, a tree stump. Like get them following Boy, leash. <laughs> get them following leash guidance up and on to things in other ways, not just the scary vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that way, it's just easier for your dog's muscle memory um, with you, and it's a it's such a great way to bond. And different services are challenging. Like a services, wooden bench yeah. is the easiest. Um, open. Sometimes you get those benches with the little open holes yeah. in it. Those are great. Those are hard. Or you'll have like a what's it a uh, curl bar where like you lay down on the flat surface it's metal get them to stand on that their paws slip a lot of confidence building start slow build your way up yep. and then use a slide use it's a really slide <laughs> make sure it's a little one though if they jump over the side you don't want them to get hurt that's true little bleachers slide. bleachers are good too um apollo says apollo loves his puppy academy trainers yes is this apollo t yeah i think what's so. the last name apollo t two t Apollo gotcha. is so cute. Wasn't Apollo, was that the video dog? Uh, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I like He was in the video. Really I, if, cool you, if you guys saw the counter surfing video, we used Apollo. Uh, do we have any other questions over here you want to do? Someone also wanted a uh, recommendation for a small hypoallergenic breed. Oh, stop it. Don't look at me. Be nice. Okay, Be nice. Okay. But you I'm, answer it. I'm Be going nice. To, I'm going to. So um, hypoallergenic is a myth doesn't actually completely exist. You have breeds like poodles and doodles. Uh, I like Bernie doodles because they're big and lazy, but it basically Not always. Not always, okay, but in the small. long term. Oh, oh you small. want small. So just get a little mini doodle of some type. But here's the thing, yeah. hypoallergenic doesn't exist because it's not the hair that creates allergies, it's the dander that comes off the skin. Certain breeds like doodles have less dander. A lot less. A lot less. But also I have a groomer that works with all kinds of different dogs and she actually asked me to stop sending her doodles because it's the one thing that does trigger her allergy. Only doodles, not shepherds that shed like crazy and have a lot of dander. So I think you gotta maybe get yourself around a couple doodles. Yeah, you gotta test it out. And yeah. see if this dog, if this breed is actually gonna help you. Otherwise you're gonna get a really sweet doodle. I'll have to give them back because you can't have them in your house. So. We, we, had an exposure. An, we had an experience with my husband and uh, we wanted a, a multi poo because it was hypoallergenic. This is like before my little dog happy. This is like 16 years ago. And uh, Chris, my husband, wasn't sneezing to death. And he was like, oh, this isn't bad. And then the dog licked him and he welled up mm -hmm. like big time. Bethany's favorite suggestion is go to the dog park and just start picking up dogs and start smelling them really deep in the coat. She yeah. really likes that. Yeah, get, get your face yeah. right in their face and just yeah. kind of just get 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 yeah. some saliva yeah. on you and test some out. Some of her biggest recommendations for yeah. getting people exposed to dogs. Yeah, yeah, it's the best way. If someone just jumped on right now. <laughs> Bethany loves that. Bethany Wilson. <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. Okay, do we have any more over here? Yeah. We want to squeeze one in. My picnics who just turned one loves Pretty. to get loose and run around the neighborhood. Any help? Yeah, it's don't one, let it's, him get loose. It's one. It's it's a one year old dog. It's it's not a puppy. It's a wild adolescent dog. You need to do tons of leash training. You need to matter to your dog. You need your dog checking in with you. We've been talking about all those things this whole time in different ways. Um, you you I don't want to oversimplify. But you got to work your dog. You got to matter to your dog, and not just like not a one year old dog. Turn food good. You can use food, but you need to build some focus and respect with your dog, and then use food as a reward. That's the difference. Puppies under five, six months old, food for everything. Food to get focus, food to matter. Puppies over six months old, you just need to be firmer, have a structure in the home, find a way to get to, to just have that connection with your dog on walks, working with them, playing with them, teaching drop it with tug is a big one. These really important impulse control commands and then they get food when they behave. It's a different, it's a totally different way of looking at it, but it's really important. Um, it, your your dog is, is having a blast. And, and even if you even if you do get to a point where you've got a lot of structure with your dog and, and they're looking to you way more, 
if they get the opportunity to be free, sometimes they'll always take it. So there might be some strong management you need to do. You might wanna get a trainer to your home to do really, really strong front door invisible boundary training. Um, well, it sounds like he was on leash too and shakes the leash off, right? Is that what it was? I don't know. I thought the dog was shaking off the leash or something or no, getting away from they me. they just like to get loose and run around the neighborhood. Yeah, because uh, they're in control and oh, it's my fun. My kind of mean them. Yeah, it's fun. D d d y yes. Oh, yeah. He says he didn't mean to be such a smart aleck. <laughs> he, oh, I meant he that. Thought he I thought meant that in every situation, but just not towards you. Just not towards you, because um, he thought you said something different. I'm a pity owner, guys. And one of the first things my girlfriend ever worked on with her with her dog, which is, I guess my dog too, don't. Yay, association. Um, was a super crazy strong threshold. We could leave that door open and then leave the house on and accidentally leave it open a couple inches. The dog would just sit there and stare at it. But also, she did hire a professional trainer, one of her trainers actually, and it taught her how to use it. The trainer taught my girlfriend how to use a training tool with her pity because it's a strong breed, guys. You'd maybe need one. Check well, it out. Lady was a strong breed. Lady was strong like, minded. everybody, <laughs> everything matters except for what you want me to do. <laughs> yeah. You got one more? I think we have one Are we, more. You want to call it? All right, guys. Um, so thank you so much. Join us next week, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can put your questions in Instagram, DMs, and, you know, all that stuff. That was p.m. P -P no, it's DM. Okay. It's DM. No, I think it's PM. Don't mess with me. It's DM.